Nope. Hey guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit. Today I have something very special for you, a PC build guide. It's not something that we'll do often on this channel just because of the price of all the components, but consider today's video a special treat. Late last year I planned out and built my ultimate dream PC, and I filmed the entire process. I hope you all enjoy. So we're going to start off with the optical disk drive from an ASUS 12X Blu-ray writer and we're going to begin by opening up the case. Get some thumb screws here in the back. I went with a Blu-ray writer just because I wanted the full functionality. I'm going to place the side panel over here. Just wanted the ability to do basically anything that I wanted with uh, with the drive. So I'm going to reach in here and pop this guy out. I know a lot of people these days are not opting for optical drives, but uh, I'm still a fan of them. So let's get right in. Now we're going to get started with the motherboard. View over here. For this build, I opted for the Core i7-5820K, also known as the LGA 2011-3 Haswell E processor. It was either between this or Skylake, but uh, Skylake is better at single core applications and since I'm going to be doing like photo and uh, video editing, I figured the six cores of the Haswell E 5820K will serve me a lot better. For the motherboard, the ASRock X99 Extreme 4. I opted for this one just because uh, it was the cheapest. I don't think that I'm going to really need uh, any super special features for the motherboard. I did buy it used on eBay, but everything seems to be working. I did a build outside of the computer already, just to make sure. And we're not going to need the SLI bridges because I'm not doing an SLI configuration. But that stuff I'll keep. And we don't need that. Just for the sake of it, I will be putting it together on the actual box outside of this. So before we even touch the motherboard, we're going to make sure to ground ourselves on our case and obviously do not work on carpet. This is linoleum, kitchen floor. So I'm going to be periodically touching that in a paranoid fashion just to make sure that I don't electrocute any of my parts or static shock them. Make sure to do that. I'm going to take this out of the bag. I'm going to make sure to grab it by the heat sink. I don't want to be touching the PCB on the motherboard just to ensure that it's okay. Put this down right here. So this uh, theme for this build is blue and black. Uh, I didn't specifically find every single component blue and black. I just found components that I liked. With the motherboard, it came down to either this or the Asus X99 Deluxe, but uh, that motherboard, I read a lot of bad stuff about it. Like if you have too many USB devices, it'll hang on boot, things like that. So. I just kind of wanted something that really worked, and a lot of the reviews for this motherboard uh, showed that it was pretty darn good. So I'm going to grab the CPU out of the box. Never had a computer with 12 threads before, so this will be really fun. And Skylake did look pretty cool, but and in terms of the actual processor price and the motherboard price, it would honestly come out to be pretty much the same, but when it comes down to it, um, more cores is always nice. And I, I feel like the X99 platform is going to be a lot more future-proof than the Z170 platform. So here we have the CPU. We're going to be very careful and make sure not to touch the, obviously the bottom, but the heat spreader as well. We're going to pay attention here to where the corner is, and it's right here. And I'm going to grab the uh, brackets here, push them out and up, 
open this guy right here. This guy has a little bit of trouble opening, I don't really know why, but there's that. You're going to find the golden triangle on the actual processor itself, which fits in that corner. And carefully pop this guy into place. I'm going to make sure that there's no wiggle. That looks good to me. I'm not going to close that guy. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to push this guy down, in, click it. Same thing for the other guy. There's kind of a lot of resistance, but that's fine. And this guy should come off. Usually it pops off on this particular motherboard. It hasn't been for me, so. There's that. Now we're going to take our RAM, which happens to be the Avexier Core Series. 32 gigs, just so I have um, enough. I'm used to using about 8 gigs of RAM, so it'll be very appreciated. I'm going to open this guy right here. And I'm going to make sure to ground myself again, just so that I'm not shocking the actual fingers of the RAM itself. Um, during the test boot that I did of this particular build, I only used two sticks, just, you know, just because why well, I had more problems, I just wanted to make sure that stuff worked, so... I'm going to remove this. I want to make sure to re remove any of the kind of film that you see on anything. This is a really beautiful set of RAM, though, to be honest. Um, on this particular motherboard, you can see uh, it's actually labeled where to place the RAM, so we're going to use the black dim slots. Make sure that all the fingers are opened, and let's pop this guy in here. Make sure that both sides are in, and then I'm going to pop in one side and pop in the other. Cool. One corner, the other corner. Take this guy, pop him open. And the plastic, not the RAM, when you're opening it. Make sure that you pay attention to the notch you're putting in the RAM. So, in this particular case, two. You want to do the inner ones first, generally. On this side, it didn't really matter to me because I knew I had enough space, but um, if you do the outer ones first, it's a little bit harder to get the inner ones. One, two. So for most builds, that would be the end of setting up the motherboard, but in this particular motherboard, it actually features an Ultra M.2 slot, which can go up to 32 gigabits per second in speed. And because of that, how am I not going to use that feature? It's a really nice, cool feature. Um, so I actually bought this nice PCIe M.2 SSD. Now they also sell SATA versions of these M.2 SSDs, but those will still have the 6 gigabit per second cap, so that's not cool. Meanwhile, this guy will be pretty fast. These are really expensive. I actually only grabbed a uh, 128 gig version, which is about 100 bucks, simply because I'll just use it as my boot drive. So we're going to slide this guy in, make sure that you pay attention to the motherboard manual, and you also need to make sure, depending on the length of your M.2, that the standoff is in the right place. Okay, interestingly enough, this uh, Samsung SM951 SSD actually didn't come with a screw. So, thankfully, my Fantex Enthulux actually does come with some extra case screws, and it looks like this is gonna fit pretty nicely after some tinkering. Looks good. Unfortunately, the PCB on this SSD is green, but hey, what are you gonna do? So, with that, the motherboard is now all set to be added into the case, and we will move toward that step now. Make sure not to throw this away, just because if you ever have to arm the board, they will not take it back without this. And we're going to take the case, and we're going to lay it flat. So, I'm not actually going to keep this fan in place, I'm going to be removing it. wire that's routed through the back. It is currently routed to the PWM header, so I'm going to be taking that out. 
There goes one guy. And I'm going to take off the top fan too. I'm gonna pop off the dust filter here at the top. And unscrew this guy. You gotta make sure not to drop any screws in the motherboard and not reclaim them. Always wanna make sure that you don't have these guys floating around in there. And the chance that they actually get caught between something and short it out. Okay. Take that off the PWM header and there's our second fan. Now it's time to install the I.O. shield with this ASRock X99 Extreme 4. The I.O. shield was pretty nasty looking silver, so I actually took some of my dad's uh, engine enamel, spray painted it black, looks much nicer. I'm gonna make sure that the uh, PS2 slots are at the top, audio at the bottom, and let's pop this guy right in. It looks great with the back of the case, it doesn't, uh, doesn't stand out at all. It was like slightly glossy. Perfect. Ground ourselves on the case. And now it's time to pop in the motherboard. Make sure to align it with the standoffs and carefully put it into place. The IO shield. Now we're gonna screw it up. One thing that's really nice about the Fantex Enthu Lux is actually the nice little kit of extra screws that you get. We're also gonna take the time now to secure the optical disc drive that I did not secure earlier. So we're gonna pop this guy right in here. Make sure that everything is all lined up properly. There are three screws on the back here for the power supply cover that I'm going to undo. Actually, these are thumb screws. Being careful not to crush any of the cords. Turn this guy back around. Down. Gotta pull this forward and lift it up and out. And there's the power supply cover. You're not gonna need that right now. And we're gonna take open our power supply. So, I think I already pop open this side. Take out this box. Get all the paperwork out of the way. And what we're looking for is this guy right here. Let me put this aside for now. And take him out. Beautiful. And take this tag off. And we're gonna make sure that the orientation is correct. So I'm gonna have the fan down. Uh, there's some nice uh, feet on this motherboard, so everything should be fine. It'll have enough breathing room. I'm going to turn this around to the back.
I'm going to take the time right now to remove this top drive bay just because I don't have that many drives. I'm not going to need it and I want the increased airflow. bed. Now we're going to begin with the wiring. You're going to need a 24 pin connector from your power supply bag and an 8 pin nicely marked CPU on this particular Corsair power supply. I'm actually going to be routing this through this back grommet here so let's begin with that. You want the one that's kind of separated. If you look at the actual power supply there's a little bit of a gap and the actual plug on the motherboard is seamless. So this one is going to loop out the back. We'll worry about cable management later. For now, I'm going to plug this guy in here. Now we're going to loop that around the back. Let's get this guy a little bit better through here. Nice and clean. And we're going to come back in right here. Now we're going to take our 8 pin and we're going to loop it through the back as well. Also through the same grommet here. It's going to connect right here. Pop this guy in. Make sure that it makes a nice click. It's in there all sturdy. Get that nice click. Well, not to crush any wires. Now, we're actually going to connect all of the front ports. So we have the USB, HD audio, USB 3.0, and the hard drive, LED, and reset switch. One thing to note with this particular case is that it does in fact list power LED in the manual, but there is actually no power LED. It is actually connected to the LED strip. I believe it's this guy right here. Yeah. So the power button, the LED, is actually a ring of LEDs that's connected to the LEDs along the side of the case. And you can see that here connected. And this is the extra cable if you want the expansion uh, LEDs, which I actually do have. I'll be doing that later. But I don't know why they chose to still include it in the manual when clearly they're not there. It confused me a little bit at first, the first time I was putting this together. So we're going to route this stuff through. Try to do this in a somewhat clean manner. And have these guys come through down here. And this guy behind. And put these guys right through here. For this next part, in order to connect the power switch and the LEDs, you're gonna actually wanna check with your manual to make sure that you know the right configuration. If you do hook this up backwards, um, nothing's gonna break, but stuff just won't work. So for starters, we're gonna hook up the hard disk drive LED, which is gonna be, in this particular case, bottom left. Push that right in there. And then the power switch, which is going to be top right. I don't actually think it matters which way you hook up the power switch, just because it's just a switch. And lastly, the reset switch. That concludes the front switches and hard drive lights. Next, we're going to hook up the USB 3.0. I'm actually going to route it to the one above this. Have it come through right here. And it looks like it's going to go in this way. For the HD audio, I'm actually going to loop it back around again. Take it out of here. And I'm going to loop it through here. Nice and 
easy. Move that back through. Now we're going to do the USB header. Once again, make sure to check your manual as to where the stuff goes. And for this guy, I'm going to loop him through here as well. Let's go right there. Now for this SATA power cable coming from the front of the case, I'm going to take one of the SATA power cables from my power supply bag, and I'm going to hook this guy up. Make sure that's the right way. And pop that guy on right there. And I'm also going to loop this to the bottom. This might change later because I'll connect it to the drive. But aside from that, I'm going to loop this guy into the bottom. As I'm running that cable, I'm actually going to take out the top hard drive tray here. As you can see, this is the hard drive tray. And I'm going to pop this guy open just like so. So now that that's open, we can add in the drive. I'm going to take the drive out of this anti-static bag here. And we're going to place this guy in the tray. Nice and easy like that. And we simply lock it right into place with these. And we can put him right in here. And on this state of power cable, I'm actually going to have this guy connect to the drive to provide it with power. I'll figure out how to uh, cable manage this later, but there should be plenty of room. I'm also going to add in my SSD. Cut this open right here. And there are actually mounting trays in this particular case in the back here. In terms of ease of use and ease of wiring though, I'm actually going to take this guy out. And I can add him to one of the hard drive trays over here. With the use of a couple screws. Now, depending on how and where this reaches, I'm actually going to put the SSD on the bottom tray so I don't have to flex the cord too much. It'll fit nicer that way. So it's just like that. So it clicks right in. And I'm going to give it this guy. I'm actually going to put this guy down here. And I'm going to have this guy come over here. For this next part, we're going to take the SATA cables that came with our motherboard. And we're going to plug these guys in. Just like this. And I'm going to run this guy out through this bottom ground right here. And I'm going to do the same for the other one. Put this guy right here. And he's also going to run out as well. I'm going to run them through this middle one, just because that's actually closer to the SATA zero port. And we're going to come out right here. You want to be sure to check your motherboard manual for this part as well. And I have, which one is this guy? This is the bottom drive, which is SSD. I'm going to pop this guy in right here. Just like that, just like this, right on top. You definitely want to make sure to do this before you install your graphics card because a lot of graphics cards will actually block this particular connector here. There we go. Nice and neat. It's just about time to test boot the system, but because this particular motherboard does not have onboard graphics, we're going to have to pop in our video card. So let's open this up. I may have to remove this later to put in some other stuff, but for the time being, 
we've got to test to make sure that what we've done works. Before I open that, I'm going to visually figure out which one of these PCI Express ports is actually the Time 16 one. And by looking at the manual, I know that it's the top one. Generally, you want the graphics card as the top one anyway. So I'm going to take out this thumb screw here. Actually, that's pretty tight. Got it stuck. You want to make sure not to touch the graphics card's PCB. This graphics card has a nice backplate on it, so you should be pretty good. We're going to take off the socket protector, and it's actually going to take two spots, so I'm going to take off the other one right here. I want to remove any kind of stickers and nonsense at the bottom here. There's one right there. It's beautiful. Okay. Usually the um, fans will have a little piece on it, but it, it does not on this particular graphics card. And I'm continue this guy over here. You want to take this off just because it might melt, and who knows what it'll do to any other components. And it looks like we're pretty good here. Now we're going to pop this guy in. Very carefully. Slide it in along here. Right here. Make sure to click that in. Right, take the thumb screws. I'm going to hold it up while I screw it in just to make sure that the card is level. I want to make sure that everything checks out on the back I.O. as well. Nothing's crooked or misaligned. Next, we're going to take these 6 plus 2 cables from our power supply bag. And I'm going to, because this particular graphics card takes so much juice to run, I'm going to connect them together. I'm going to carefully click it into place. And technically you could plug in the other one right there and do it, but I don't want to run into any problems, so I'm just going to use two separate cables. Here's the other one. Put this together and pop this guy in right here. This would be one of those moments that would be really nice to have some custom cables just because this has uh, the extra connectors hanging off of it. I'm going to loop these through the back, ground it, and attach them into the power supply. And I'm going to take these guys that I just put through here and I'm going to loop them back through the bottom. And now both of these guys are going to go right up in the top right where it says PCIe. All set. With all that done, now we're going to do a quick test boot just to make sure that everything that we've got so far is working. So far we have LED activity, it's really good. I'm going to turn on the TV, see if we've got a message. we do. So that's looking pretty good. We'll continue on. Next up, I'm going to be installing this airflow fan for the back of the case. Um, I know it already came with one, but stylistically I wanted a nice blue LED one to go with the build. You can usually check the way that the, the fan is flowing but for the most part, this is going to be exhaust where it has the back. So I'm going to be mindful of where this cable is going. It's actually coming out here, and the fan will be put in like that. But I'm not actually going to hook this up just yet, and you'll see why later.
With that out of the way, I'm now gonna run some cables to the optical drive, just because we didn't do that. I'm gonna pop this guy right in here. There we go. I got that one. Once again, I'm gonna loop this out through the back just for cleanliness. I'm gonna use this grommet because it's right there. Unfortunately, there's nothing else to hook any of these extra plugs to. So it's just kind of a messy cable situation. But if you have your own custom cables, you can avoid that if you plan ahead. Come down through the bottom once again. Once more, we're gonna take this and we're gonna clip it to this peripheral and SATA one right here. We're gonna run this guy from here. I'm gonna loop this guy through the back like we keep doing. And I'm gonna have it come back through right in here. And connect it to one of these SATA ports. There we go. Graphics card back in. Click it in. Next, I'm going to be installing my wireless card. Once again, ground ourselves. Get this little guy right here. I'm going to use a small PCIe Gen 1 slot down here. Next, I'm going to put this USB cable onto the card, just because this will make it easier once I've plugged the guy in. Slide this guy in right here. Align it with the PCI Express right there. Click it right into place. And I'm going to loop this wire out the back and in again. just like that. Take this guy right here. I'm going to route it right back in this grommet. It needs to actually go just like this. Like that. Now for the thumb screw. Okay, that's it for the wireless card. This next step isn't super critical for right now, but with this particular wireless card, it comes with an antenna. I'll just set this up for myself later. Put that out of the bag. I'm gonna remove the tape from this. Okay, with that off, I'm gonna make sure that we here. And then, in this case, this little guy would go on top of the PC. For right now, it doesn't really matter as much, so I'll just leave it like that. It's finally time for our CPU cooler, which in this case is the SwiftTech H240X. Had a lot of difficulty finding this guy. It's very popular, and I guess they only make very small runs. It sells out very quickly. I actually ordered the NZXT Kraken X61, but then I ended up finding this guy online, so I set back the NZXT. There's nothing wrong with the NZXT, just to say that, but um, I just think this guy looks cooler and performance is just that much better. I'm gonna take out all the bags, brackets. Oh, here are the color. You can actually change the different colors. Of, it's not the LED, but you put this on top of it and it changes the color. So, oh, there's another little bag here. Screws. Now, I'm actually going to replace the two fans on the top of this uh, with the, some of the Corsair ones that I bought. 
static pressure fans actually because they'll be blowing through the cooler. So let's get those. Open this guy up. And let's get those installed. So I'm going to be taking these guys off the top here. Put those free, and they continue. off. I'm going to do a quick dry fit just to make sure that everything is looking fine and figure out where everything is going to go. So I'm going to very carefully put this guy in here. Take a look at what that looks like. Looks like it's going to go right there. Looks pretty good. So something that I ended up noticing is that this bracket was on it out of the box is actually a pain in the butt to take off because they have it on here really tight. So let's get that. There we go. Sounds like I'm breaking it, but I'm not. Just one more guy on loose right here. And there we go. Next, I'm going to place these fans at the top and lay out where they're going to go. And those screws are going to go down through into the radiator. What's nice about these particular fans is it doesn't really matter what orientation you have them in because the Corsair logo moves with the actual fan blade, so that's cool. You don't have to worry about being too OCD about that. And I'm also going to loop this guy down through the back. It's actually nice little cutouts in the brackets here. Just like that. I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit and I'm going to switch these around and do a pull configuration. I don't think it matters too much, maybe a couple degrees, uh, depending on push or pull. For this instance, I'll put an airflow fan below it to push air through and these will suck out the hot air, or blow out the hot air, I should say, but suck it from the radiator. Okay. I put this guy up in here carefully. definitely the trickiest part. Much easier this time. Now that I have a couple in there, I don't have to hold it up from the bottom anymore. And they should go along a lot faster now. I'm going to keep doing opposite corners just to make sure everything is aligned correctly. I'm going to use the screws that Swift Tech gave me, just because they're threaded all the way down, so it might give us a little bit of extra thread, because the one from the, the screws from the Fantex and through Lux have just a tiny thread at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to remove the protective plastic on the actual water block itself. Remove that. 
and on the back you'll see that there's actually a peel-off sticker on the copper backplate. But for right now, I'm going to take our thermal compound and I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put a line of it like a grain of uncooked rice. Just like that. You can make sure to now remove this piece of protective plastic. And I'm actually going to move this. Get that out of the way. And attach this to the CPU block. Since we're doing socket 2011, we don't need a backplate or anything even though it came with one. This is quite difficult. We're going to put this in the most comfortable way that the yeah, block will fit. You have to kind of walk it up the edge because it there's a gap so that it could be sized different ways. Okay. It's really not going into place there. Next, we're going to grab these cables here that I actually did not untie. These are coming from the pump itself. Okay, and I'm going to route these two to the back. Turn around the case for you guys once I clean this up. So, with the Fantex Enthu Lux, it actually comes with its own PWM fan splitter, but the pump itself needs this one that it comes with. So we're going to use this one. This is quite the mess back here, but we'll get that fixed up when we're all done. Next we're going to take this guy we're going to unwrap him. Now what we've got here is SATA power, and this is going to go to the PWM fan header on the actual motherboard. So not, don't worry about that yet. I'm going to put this guy on this SATA header here. So we're going to take off the first three caps of the PWM splitter here. And it's going to use all the rest of these to mimic the first one. So we're going to take one of the fans from the top and we're going to plug this guy right in. Just like that. And next one. We're actually going to put the pump on here as well. For cable management purposes, I'm actually going to switch around where these are plugged in. So this guy was here, but I'm going to put him here just because there's a lot of extra room for that one. And then this SATA connector coming off of the pump is going to connect here. So that'll be a little bit more tidy, I think. Once we've got our fan set up, we're going to take this end right here and connect this guy to the PWM fan header on the motherboard itself. Coming off of the CPU block right here, we have this, which looks like a fan header, but it's actually an LED. So what I actually ended up doing was looping this around between the RAM clip here and the heat sink, and I'm going to connect it over here to CPU fan 1, like that. That's pretty clean. There's not really much else I can do with that. So we're going to test boot this again. I've plugged in my mouse and my keyboard here so we can actually navigate through the BIOS. And I'm going to turn on the system. Got one fan that I didn't hook up yet, clearly. The Swift Tech pump is actually on now. Looks really great. And we're going to turn on the monitor, of course. We're going to do. I'm going to press delete. Where is delete? And we are now in the BIOS. The mouse is working. Okay. It's recognizing all the RAM, which is great. Of course, it's only running in 2133 because we actually have to overclock it to 2400, the actual RAM speed. So, I've done my cable management. 
I actually ended up going with both the Fantex Fan Hub and the Swift Tech one. That way the Swift Tech one will monitor the pump and this one will monitor the fans. Um, not the cleanest job, but everything has a place and it's kind of hard to fit two headers in here without it looking too great, but everything is pretty flush on the side so I think it should go on pretty easily. So with everything else set and done, we're going to set up the extra LED strip that I got for the case. This is the two meter strip. You can get a one meter strip, but it's not going to go all the way around the front, which I am hoping this will. And this guy is going to connect to this guy right here that comes from the cables that are connected to the front plate. So we're going to flip this guy around, we're going to connect this, and we're going to figure out the optimal way of routing this all the way around the front. Just taking a quick look here at the LEDs. Uh, it's probably not showing up properly on camera, but it looks really beautiful. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to have this guy in this corner. We're going to loop it up. It's going to be a tight fit over here with this Corsair fan, but I'll have to figure that out. It's going to go up across the top and back down along the side here. So it should be really nice. So I've got the new LED strip in there. Basically I routed the cable from the back through to the top of this fan here. And the strip starts here, goes underneath all the way across, up the side panel, underneath the top. I don't know if you're going to be able to see in there. Yep. And then comes nice and neat and straight down the side of the case. So let's take a look at what that looks like when it's all booted up. On switches on. Quite nice. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but it's very beautiful. And now the cool thing about this particular strip, since it works with the rest of the case, is we can swap the colors. and so on. And now the finishing touches are just going to be putting on the back and the front panels. And that, guys, completes the build log. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're interested in seeing some benchmarks, I have yet to overclock the system, but I'll show you a couple benchmarks on the screen now. If you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, dislike it. Also, let me know in the comments section down below if you purchased anything during this Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale, and let me know what you bought and how much you paid for it. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Uh, it's not a massive collection, it's just the games that I acquired over the years. I was pretty picky with what I picked up, and uh, I was burned a couple times with some games. This is everything in here. Um, I actually kept them in this 
kind of silly Mega Bloks Dragons can considering the fact that we are I know what you're talking about but you're right because I've heard a lot of people that don't like him I didn't I didn't like yeah. him he was fine it's like you like you can tell right away the first time you see him he's like oh man I know magic I can help I'm the best <laughs> he's surrounded by these like 30 year old hardened criminals with like axes who like cannibalize small children 